giving all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Baal Shem, Yahweh Shai, Baal Shem, And uh, once again, it's another video. Hopefully it's edifying to you, brothers and you sisters out there of the household of faith. Shalom to the Lord's elect. So this one will be a quick one. Um, I want to say a few words uh, on this video here. <coughs> Excuse me, on this video here. Make no tarrying to turn to Yahweh Bar Shem Yahweh Shai. And uh, those are sage words. That's actually um, uh, uh, scriptural. It's a quote from a scripture. Make no tarrying to serve the Lord. Uh, the word tarrying means to wait. All right. We're in a time of um, uh, serious judgments being brought out here by Yahweh Bar Shem Yahweh Shai. So if you hear the calling, once you hear this knowledge, this truth, that's likened unto hearing the calling. That's a calling. And the phone had to chime on that one. That's a calling that you're hearing. Okay? It's it's basically it's the Heavenly Father through His only begotten Son calling you to come and serve them. Okay? Uh let me get that scripture for you. Your calling. It is right here. Um, the book of Ephesians 1 and 18. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. This is what happens when you first hear the knowledge, hear the truth from the Lord's apostles, prophets, teachers, however you heard it, and you understand it. If you can hear and you understand it and it resonates with you, that's your calling. You're receiving what is called a calling. That's the Heavenly Father through His only begotten Son calling unto you to come and serve Him through His only begotten Son. So it says, Ephesians 1 and 18, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of His calling. See that? And what the riches of the glory of His, of his inheritance in the saints. And what is that? Basically for us to receive salvation and then eternal life salvation and then eternal life you know our bodies are going to be changed like it says in the twinkling of an eye we're not going to have to worry about death anymore and to receive all the blessings uh in the kingdom we're going to receive a kingdom we're going to be uh immensely wealthy in that kingdom uh, we're going to be under underneath what is called the blessings in that kingdom. And you can find that in Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, beginning at the uh, first verse. It tells you of all the blessings we're going to receive. So that's the hope of our calling. Like it says, the hope of your calling. We're going to be made perfect. We're never going to have a bad day, <laughs> so to speak. Unlike being in this kingdom. You know, so that's all part of the hope of our calling. So it begins with you hearing the calling first. Okay, you hear these scriptures and you understand them. That's your calling. All right, let's read the next one. Second Peter 1 and 10. Wherefore, the rather brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you shall never fail. So it's not just about being called. It's about being chosen too, being, being part of the elect. Now, um, what, more than almost 35 years ago, I received my calling. And, you know, I actually heard a voice saying, you know why? Because I always tell the story how, you know, I got, uh, for mistaken identity, I got put in uh, in a jail cell. And uh was in there that I actually heard a voice say, you know why you in here? I said, yep. I said, and then I made a quick prayer. I said, Lord, if you get me out of this, I'll serve you. That's exactly what I said. And uh, this was uh, a week after I'd seen the brothers on 34th and 7th Avenue teaching the word. And I, you know, I was never the same again, you know. And the uh, Lord got me out of it, and I've been doing the work ever since. So that was my calling, you know. So that's my testimony. That's my calling. I actually heard a calling. You know why you're in here? I said, yep, if you, Lord, if you get me out of this, I'll serve you. That's exactly what I said. So, you know, so 
every brother has his story of how he came into the knowledge, how he came into the truth. That was his calling. So the point is, don't wait. When you hear your calling, don't wait to come and serve you. How about Shimei Ashai? All right? Because if you wait <laughs> and you, you, you know, you, um, if you wait, uh, you may, uh, how do I say this? You, you may not be, um, you may not receive that opportunity. You know, you may just receive judgment. All right. So it's not a good idea to wait. That's the purpose of this video. It's not a good idea to wait when you, when you hear the calling of Yahweh Shem Yashai. It's not a good idea to wait. Okay. That's why the scriptures say, make no tarrant. Anyway, um, let me go to this video and let me play some of them. this video right here. Praise and honor and glory to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, with God, with Dash. I want to say and give double honors to the apostles and the bishop, elders, of great most of for teaching his word and truth and sincerity and for ruling well. And salutations to my fellow Abdul across the four corners of the globe, teaching and prophesying in the name of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. And my brother, the bar Yahweh Del from GMS Hawaii, coming to you with another quick lesson. And it's on this video that you see right here in front of you. This is the elder Manak Kazakba from South Carolina with the uh, one of our brothers, they were doing the work, and um, you know these young jigs came by, you know, with you know a spirit of folly, but they had some some questions that could be used to edify, and one um so I kind of want to focus on that, and also too, you know, um, I was going to title this lesson, you know, make notarian to turn to the Lord, you know, uh, the brother Kahan, Allah in our camp, he actually did a video on this. It was entitled, uh, same thing, when I'm ready to turn my life around, then I will listen. And it was just, I think it was just Jake right here who said that, you know, because Jake, you're in the world, you live living. So the brother you heard speaking, that's Gabar Yahawada. I uh, met that bro brother a few times. The, brother's, uh, the brother comes out of Hawaii, and he mentioned the priest Kahan. I've also met that brother, real cool brother. Both of them were real cool brothers in the faith. And he also lives in Hawaii. And uh, the brother, uh, Priest Kahani, goes out with Gabar Yahawada. And there's this other brother. It's, it's usually three of them. That other, that other brother, I'm not sure of his name, but uh, they teach out there in Hawaii. So uh, basically, Gabar Yahawada said that uh, Priest Kahan did a video of pretty much the same topic. So that's the spirit. You know, we're in a time of judgment now. You know, the Bible says that judgment comes upon uh, us like an evil net. Y you never know when it's coming. Okay. So w once you receive the calling, you make the most of it. Okay. This is it right here. This is one of the one when I was listening to this video here by uh, Gabar Yahweh, this scripture came to mind of. This is one of the main reasons why we should not wait to serve Yahweh Barshim Yahushai. This is Ecclesiastes 9 and 12. For man also knoweth not his time. See that? As the fishes that are taken in an evil net, and as the birds that are caught in the snare, so are the sons of men snared in an evil time when it falleth suddenly upon them. See that? An evil time. Now, the, the, the word evil means bad time or bad age. So you never know when that judgment, the, the scriptures say every day, every morning, the Heavenly Father doth bring judgment. And the people out here getting destroyed, getting killed and whatever, that's part of the Lord's judgment. So that the attitude we should have is once we hear the calling to make the most of it. Because you never know, man. All right. Um, another thing, too, uh, is uh, once you come into the work and you start doing the work, you, you're building up treasure in heaven. Okay, let me get that for you. Treasure.
this is um, Mark 10 and 21. Then Yahushai, beholding him, loved him and said unto him, One thing thou lackest, go thy way, sell whatsoever thou hast. Now here's the point, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come, take up the cross, and follow me. In other words, do the work. What is the work? Learn this knowledge, this truth, and go out and teach it. Like Yahweh Shai told Peter, feed my lambs and feed my sheep. Now when you do that, you're building up what? Treasure in heaven. Which which uh you you get you get rewarded for that. Okay. Matter of fact, um receive wages. Let's get that scripture. Make no tarrying to do the work. Because we get wages, man. Okay. It is right here. John, the fourth chapter. Uh, begin at the 34th verse. Yahweh shall say, say unto them, My meat is to do the will of, the, of him that sent me. In other words, the work. And to finish his work. See, see that? So that's the attitude we should have, especially when we heard the calling. It's time to do the work, right? Say you not, or say not ye, there are yet four months, right? In other words, uh, it, in other words, um, waiting to go and do the work. No, as soon as we hear the calling, we spring immediately into action. We, you know, we that should be our mentality to go right ahead to do this work. Say not ye, there are yet four months, and then cometh harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white, all ready to harvest. Right, you still got certain members out there of the elect, you know, that are ready to be sealed by this work. And they might hear the knowledge and the truth through you. So... You know, if you go out there to do the work and you're bringing fruit, you're gonna get wages. You're gonna get uh, uh, you're gonna get wages for that fruit that you helped brought in. Okay, you went out there and you did the work. Let's keep reading. It says uh, again, these are the words of Yahweh Shai. This is him speaking here. And he that reapeth receiveth wages. You see that? And gathereth fruit unto life eternal. Right. So, well, there's a scripture, it goes, um, let him know that he that, oh man, oh man, let me see if I can find that. Uh, trying to remember how to word it so I can find the scripture. Save him from a multitude of sins. Let me put that again. Save him from a multitude. Oh. Okay, here. Here we go. James 5 and 20. Barakatayabo should go shout it, man. Now, this is a powerful scripture right here. James 5 and 20. Let's get that. And then I'm going to read that in the NLT. This is another reason why you want to, you don't want to waste time to learn this knowledge, this truth, and go out and do the work. You don't put it on the back burner, man, especially when you hear, you hear the calling. Uh, James 5 and 20, let him know that he which converteth the sinner from the error of his way. And how do you do that? Through the work. You learn this knowledge, this truth, you go out and teach, and somebody might come up. That's, the, the, you know, the, uh, maybe one of the members of the elect, all right? And they might hear the knowledge, the truth through you, and then they change the error of their ways through you because you went out there and you did the work. So this is a message to you. James 5 and 20, let him know that he which converteth the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death. <laughs> See that? and shall hide a multitude of sins. Right. See? So that's part of the wages, man. Okay? 
Our, we hide a multitude of sins just by going out there and doing the work. Let's read that in the NLT. James 5 and 20. You can be sure that whoever brings the sinner back will save that person from death. Yeah, because like I said earlier, judgment is out here, man. Judgment of death. The Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son is extremely angry. All right? So every day, judgment is coming forth, man. Yahweh Shem Shai is bringing these judgments of death out here, man. Jeremiah, the 15th chapter, goes into it because of, of Israel's wickedness. Let me show you that real quick. So here it is. You hear the calling. And you, you know, you're waiting around just to go and do the work. It's not a, that's not a good move. Jeremiah, the 15th chapter, uh, show you that. The, see, look at, look at the subheading here. Judgment must come. See that? Then said the Lord unto me, though Moses and Samuel stood before me, yet my mind could not be toward this people. What people? The Israelites. Cast them out of my sight and let them go forth. Why? Because they were extremely wicked, just like they are now. And it shall come to pass, if they say unto thee, Whither shall we go? Then thou shalt tell them, Thus saith the Lord, such as are for death to death. See that? that was, it was true back then, and it's even more true now. Because Israel is wicked as hell right now. So the Heavenly Father got these deaf angels out here, bringing death upon his people for their wickedness. So here it is, the Lord done woke you up, right? He woke you up, give you the knowledge, the truth, you know, and you're able to see. And, uh, you, you know, you've, you've, like the scriptures say, you see your calling. Should you not have that attitude of going out there and trying to warn the Lord's people? Peradventure, try to deliver some of them by giving them this word. I just read it to you, James 5 and 20. Okay? It says, Thus saith the Lord, such as are for death to death, and such as are for the sword to the sword, and such as are for the famine to the famine, and such as are for the captivity to the captivity. And I will appoint over them four kinds, saith the Lord. The sword to slay, that's the judgments that goes on every day. Every day these judgments go on. Okay? That I'm, that I'm reading here. The Lord is out here judging his people, man, bringing death upon them for their wickedness for their hard-headedness, for their rebelliousness, all right? And I will appoint over them four kinds, say of the Lord, the sword to slay and the dogs to tear and the fowls of the heaven and the beasts of the earth to devour and destroy. There you go, man. Judgments. Judgments. So again, Jeremiah, um, James 5 and 20, let him know that he which converteth the sinner from the error of his way by learning this truth and going out and teaching it, i.e. I doing the work, shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins. See that? So that's a perfect reason why we should not wait to, or why we should not tarry to come and serve the Lord. All right? Jeremiah 4 and 36. I keep saying Jeremiah. John 4 and 36, and he that reapeth receiveth wages and gathereth fruit unto life eternal. See that? Save a soul from what? From death. That's the same thing that James 5 and 20 says. That both he that soweth, the guy who did the work, as in you, you got the knowledge, the truth, you heard the calling, you went out there and did the work, you're the guy that's sowing, you're sowing what? The seeds of this word, this, this knowledge is truth, right? That both he that soweth, and he that reapeth may rejoice together. See, see that? So they both, or they both get the what? The prize. They both get the uh, prize for going out and doing the work. And the prize begins with salvation. All right, because you, uh, scriptures speak about you being saved by your faith and by your works. Okay, uh, J the same James that I read said. He said this, I'll show, I'll, I'll show you my faith by my works. What is that? Uh, James 2, what is that? Yep, look at the subheading, faith and works. James 2. Yea, a man may say, 
This is the 18th verse. A man may say, Thou hast faith and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. See? So it takes faith to do this work. So by us going out there and doing the work, we're showing our faith to Yahweh Bashim Yahshai. And at the same time, we're pleasing Yahweh Bashim Yahshai because we're showing our faith by doing the work. And without faith, it's impossible to please the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. This is Hebrews 11 and 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please Him. For he that cometh to the Most High must believe that he is, and that he is a, listen to this, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him, as in doing the work. You get reward, you get wages. I just read that to you in the book of John. So these are all reasons why we should not wait to go out there and do the work. So pretty much I'm going to end it there. Like I said, this was supposed to be a quick one, but... Went on, it went on a little longer. But anyway, hopefully you, if you were edified, drop a line in the comment section. On to the next one.